Today I want to talk about what I consider to be the ultimate diet, the hybrid. There are so many options out there when it comes to diet, and it seems that all are claimed to be the healthiest and the best way to lose body fat. What I want to do today is break down the benefits of each and see how we can incorporate them into the ultimate hybrid diet. I'm going to focus mainly on the benefits relative to body composition as opposed to some of the other benefits that are claimed by the certain diet. So the first most commonly applied diet is macro tracking. In its most basic form, this is calorie tracking. More preferable is macro tracking. In other words, tracking proteins, carbohydrates, and fat intake. This is usually done either with a pen and paper or by technology to keep a food diary and ensure your intake is sufficient to sustain activity, but not body fat. Now, the benefits of this diet is it's a more flexible approach that allows you to eat whatever you like as long as your daily totals are within the set parameters to ensure you are achieving your body composition goals. This close tracking can also allow you to modify your diet based on the results. So it's a great way to start off any nutrition plan. Very popular nowadays are low carb diet options. And in these options, we have multiple variations along the same theme with different degrees of tolerance. Very popular at the moment are the carnivore diet and the ketogenic diet or the keto diet. In these, no carbs are allowed or very minimal carbs are allowed. Carnivore diet, you're only allowed to eat animal products and the keto diet is restricting yourself to less than 10% of your intake from carbs. Then we've got slightly less extreme versions in terms of the paleo diet, the zone diet, low carb, there's many other names for them, but they're the most commonly named. We look at these as restricting your carbohydrates to around 30% or less, about a third of your daily intake. The benefits to both of these forms of diet is that it's commonly known that carbohydrate intake causes greater production of insulin, which contributes to increased body fat. Reducing or removing carbohydrates is a good option to control body fat. And with all of these options, ideally we're looking for minimal uh, starches and zero sugars. Next up we have intermittent fasting and time restricted eating. These include, but are not limited to, first of all, the 5-2 diet. Now the 5-2 diet is basically five days of a regular diet with two days out of the seven severely calorie restricted. So for five days, you'll eat as normal, and then two of those days, you'll eat a diet that generally is fewer than 500 calories. With the 16-8 diet, this is time-restricted eating, and within that, you eat within an eight-hour window, for the other 16 hours a day, you will fast. So you might eat between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. or various variations on that. There's other variations of fasting diets, longer fasts, smaller eating windows. You get the idea. Now the benefits of fasting is that it allows your body time to utilize all of your stored glycogen and glucose. Uh, that's carbohydrates, basically. Once you've depleted your glycogen stores, your body is forced to break down body fat for energy. So it's a good way to ensure you've got rid of that glycogen and therefore your body has to use body fat because it's got no other energy source there. Next up, I want to talk about vegetarian and vegan diets. Now, primarily, these diets are a re reduced calorie intake, mainly because you're reducing the amount of fat available because there's not that much fat available through the vegan diet. You're not getting your meats, your cheeses, your butters, your dairy in the vegan diet. In the vegetarian, um, obviously there's more fats available if you're having dairy in there. In addition to that, you're increasing your fiber intake by having more nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables, which helps to counter the fiber, uh, the carbohydrate intake. Higher fiber meals reduce the glycemic load making meals produce a more slow release of energy and therefore a lower requirement of insulin, or a lower insulin spike, I should say. 
In addition, having more plant-based foods means a higher micronutrient intake. In the past, having a more plant-based diet would have had a greater influence on health because there were very few processed foods that you could get for vegans. However, the increased popularity of vegan and vegetarian diets mean there's a huge industry now. And it causes there to be a far greater of processed foods available for vegetarians and vegans, especially with the prevalence of meat substitutes. Processing any food will cause a reduction in the fiber and nutrient density of that food. So the act of being vegan alone does not necessarily give you any health benefit. The ultimate hybrid diet. From all of these diets above, we can take the best bits and create this hybrid diet. First thing we're going to do is we're going to plan and track your macros. Stick to a suggested intake of protein, carbs and fats and adjust your calorie intake based upon results. Alongside that, we're going to reduce our carbohydrate intake. So I would personally suggest a diet of no more than 40% of your calories coming from carbohydrates. Try to remove sugar from your diet and have minimal amount of starches. Aim to have your starches and higher carbohydrate intakes before and after workouts. Next, we're going to implement some fasting into this diet. Ideally, we'll implement both variations of fasting for maximum results, starting with the 5-2 diet. I would suggest you have two fasted days a week and link these alongside your recovery days where there's a, great, uh, a lesser demand for calories and especially for carbohydrates. So for example, you would train on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at full intensity with your high intensity workouts that require glycogen. Your Thursday will be a lower intensity recovery day and you combine this with your fasted day. Go back on Friday, Saturday to your regular diet, hit those high intensity workouts and do the same on a Sunday with your recovery and fasting period. Alongside the 5-2, you would also have a 16-8 time restricted eating diet on the other training days. So you would plan to have your calories within an eight hour window. Try to do this with two to three meals a day and without snacking in between. So it might look as a sample, you would get up at, and train at 6.30 in the morning. Your then fast would then end at 8 a.m. So you'd have some fasted training first thing in the morning. Don't forget that if you've eaten the previous day and had carbohydrates, you've got some glycogen stores, so you don't use those up overnight necessarily. Might have your lunch at 12 o'clock and then dinner at 3.30, beginning your fast at four o'clock. That gives you the eight hour window and then a 16 hour fast overnight. If you're combining this with your fast days, I would suggest you begin your daily fast. So the, the fast that you have on the Thursday and the Sunday, for example, that would start on the evening before at the end of your eating window. So for example, if you're fasting Thursday, and your eight hour window ends at 4 p.m. for eating on the Wednesday, that's when your fast begins for the Thursday, and it doesn't, you don't resume normal eating until 8 a.m. the following Friday. Remember on the 5-2, on those fasted days, you are still eating calories. I would recommend 500 calories maximum and have that one meal on the evening of the Thursday. So before you hit your high intensity workout on the Friday morning, Ensure that meal has adequate carbohydrates to fuel that morning workout. And then go and train fasted on that Friday morning after your evening of fasting. Um, black coffee before any workout is acceptable as part of that fast. Having this extended 40 hour fasted period twice a week will definitely accelerate the fat burning process. Finally, we're gonna add the vegan benefits in increasing your fruit and vegetable intake plan your diet to be nutrient dense. This was the original major benefit of the vegan diet. Eat foods as close to their natural state as possible, which keeps fiber and micronutrient content at its highest. And again, this translates into what I think was a major benefit of vegetarianism and veganism at the beginning, is that you're eating mainly whole foods, and this matters. 
because whole foods contain more micronutrients, they are more micronutrient dense and they have more fiber. They also have more water weight in them, which will keep you fuller for longer. As I spoke earlier, processed, processing any food degrades the quality of that food. Now, is this ultimate diet, is it realistic? As with all diets, 100% adherence is difficult. And with all of these diets combined, obviously it's gonna make it more difficult soon. But if you did adhere to it 100%, your results would be very accelerated. Working as close to them as possible would also bring you some really good results. Now, how we implement these habits at CrossFit Children is not doing all of this in one go because it is a big jump. We do four nutrition kickstarts. The first one, we cut out the booze, the sugar, the processed food and the starches. We do it for 28 days. Then we reset. The second kickstart, which happens later in, this, in the year, in early spring, is about macronutrient tracking. Our third variation, again, another reset performed in the autumn, is about cutting out the snacks and cutting out those in-between meals. And then finally, our fourth challenge happening at the start of the winter is about increasing our intake of fruits and vegetables. We perform each of these kickstarts in isolation to each other to layer on the habits. As I say, jumping into all of those ultimate diet habits is gonna be very hard for most people if you're starting from a position where you haven't done anything for your nutrition as well. Yes, the ideal and best and fastest way may well be the ultimate diet, but this requires a huge change and it's pretty overwhelming, which is why our kickstarts are so successful because we implement small changes for short periods of time. People can then learn better habits and have some kind of moderation through each of these habits and implement them into the lifestyle that fits them. So yes, the ideal and fastest way for you to change your body composition would be the ultimate diet. But to get the best results, you require the biggest change and implementing this all at once is pretty overwhelming for most people, which is why our kickstarts are just one portion of a time of, these, uh, hybrid, of this hybrid diet. It's much easier to just say, right, for 28 days, you're going to do no booze, no sugar, no processed foods, than to say you're going to do that fast, you're going to add more fruit and vegetables. It's just too much, it's overwhelming. If someone said to me, how can I lose my body, body fat as fast as possible? Yes. The hybrid diet is the answer, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that to that individual. It really depends on what fits their lifestyle, what mental state they're in, what they've done in the past as well. We would generally layer changes on slowly to enable people to not be overwhelmed. It's not about just going through that ultimate diet as that's your... Um, Dinner, actually. So we perform each of these kickstarts in isolation to each other to, to layer on the habits and people then can pick and mix effectively good dietary habits that work for them. Yes, the ideal and fastest way would be to implement the ultimate hybrid diet, but these strong results require the biggest change and implementing all of this at once is pretty overwhelming for most people. This is why our kickstarts are more successful because we're not seeking perfection, we're seeking small changes in people's habits. So if someone asks me, how to lose weight as fast as possible, then the answer might be, in my mind, I might know that the answer is yes, if you did everything in the ultimate diet, that is the right way to go. But I wouldn't recommend that for most individuals because it might not fit their lifestyle and where they're at right now. Someone has never done anything for their diet to say you have to do all of this is just overwhelming. In most cases, I'm just going to take elements of each of the diets noted and find a solution for that person that fits them best. And that's how you have to work any diet. It has to fit within your current life situation, your mental state, what your capabilities are. 
Now, if you're not sure where to go with your diet, come along and join us and just take part in a couple of nutrition kickstarts. Even with these, we don't even require 100% compliance on our kickstart. So even though it's a small section, you don't need to do 100%. You just need to start implementing small changes. That's where you need to begin on the same with your exercise and training. You don't need to be coming in and training six days a week, full on every day, doing accessory work, everything else. You just need to start somewhere. I like having these kickstarts and I like having an end date for any diet you're going to do. People perform much better when they know there's a start and a finish. If you've got this endless road ahead of you, it is too daunting for you to stick to. It's something I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a, a future episode. So thanks for giving me your time. This is what I consider to be the ultimate hybrid diet. Like I say, I'm not saying you should jump in on that straight away. I'm just saying that's the elements. We talk about all these diets you hear about. They talk about, oh, this is the best diet, this is the best, this is the best diet. There's benefits to each of those diets and they can apply to you and you might take little bits of each that will give you some benefit, but there's no one specific paleo, keto, fasting that if you just do that alone is perfect. You have to find what works best for you and your current situation. If you've got any questions, if you'd like me to do a, a vlog or a episode on anything that you want are interested in, please mention it in the comments below or drop me an email, jeremy at crossfitchilton.com. Thanks guys.